hi welcome back to our second episode of the podcast if you've seen our last week's episode we talked about the india vogue cover and the dior saddle bag so this week onwards we've decided the format is going to be that the first half of the podcast we'll talk about fashion related news and the second half will be something lifestyle related so anisha let's start okay so this week's fashion related topic is something i think we have constantly talked about before we have been chatting about it whatsapping about it or we show each other photographs of this the episode this week is going to talk about copying in fashion now if you have any idea on what's happening on instagram or if you are in instagram i'm sure you know about the instagram account called diet prada and the indian version of the account called diet sabya now these two are very clever instagram accounts and they kind of chronicle and talk about all the copying that is going on in the fashion industry so they showcase two pictures side by side where they show you the original design and the copied design and there have been lots of instances of this so shortrupa i know you were telling me about your most recent this copying situation that you have come across okay tell me about it because i don't know about the strike thing that you mentioned i'm not aware of that situation okay so uh, let me start with this i think this was on the indian diet uh, sabya account so that's basically the copy that you mentioned of uh, diet prada so they had uh, mentioned this so there is this uh, i believe you said the uk designer called tom brown so a lot of his clothes and his bags and he makes a lot of formal wear and things like that a lot of it has these uh, two stripes running down uh um, the pants like sometimes he has it on the sleeves of the shirt also in some of his bags on his ties etc so now somehow these stripes are everywhere they're uh they're on like formal pants and even on like i i think i was uh, looking at something on zara the other day and they had these stripes running down the pants and it's everywhere so things like that is it really can you really call that i mean obviously it is inspired but i'm sure he didn't come up with the idea of putting stripes on clothes that's been around forever so things like that do you really can you say that they are a copy or is it at some point you have to allow these things okay so we i'm sorry but do isn't like adidas the same thing adidas has stripes all over right yeah but the thing with adidas i think they have three stripes and they have that trademark so any i think athletic wear or sports wear if you have three stripes uh on like any sort of uh i think athletic wear specifically i might be wrong on that but uh, if they can basically uh like call you out on it like that's trademarked so that seems a bit unfair right because then on that basis then how can adidas trademark like three stripes if you can't use two stripes together or whatever number of yeah. stripes that seems a bit too generic to be copied exactly I mean, yeah to be honest it is copied it's not that zara is coming up with its own designers and sitting in the back somewhere and sitting and getting inspiration on fashion anywhere zara is just looking at what's happening in the runway and churning it out in 3 weeks so i mean of course it is copied but it's just that i mean what can be copied and what can't be copied that now that's what it comes back to but certain things uh, some designers are very like like for instance the red soles of like those you cannot copy like absolutely those are and uh, they've even sued a bunch of people who copied that and then there was this whole case where they fought saying that can that be uh, like trademark but it uh, but he won that case and so things like make sense to trademark something as generic as a color on the sole of shoes but ideally since that is such an iconic thing it i mean they have done it so technically it can be done but apart from that things like checks and stripes and a certain shade of color can is does it really make sense that uh, if one brand is known to use it that no other brand can use it now you mentioned checks and now i want to say remember the burberry check yes exactly so yeah so see that is quite a trademark i mean that is yeah. kind of trademarked and you can't really use burberry checks anywhere 
like at least those that pattern of checks right the brown the tan and the red line or whatever but okay but sorry go ahead i want to mention something so i have this umbrella like literally when i went to a store it had the exact checks i picked it out thinking i mean not that it was the original but thinking it looked very fim- like similar and it was like quite nice so i it reminded me of burberry and that's the only reason i picked out this umbrella but they are using it i'm sure the brand is some local brand and they were not definitely not sued by burberry but inspired things like this are always you can you can't really say because it didn't have a logo or it didn't have any kind of text or design or anything that suggested uh it was a burberry copy but generally if you see a design like um, as i mentioned like we will you'll always know that it reminds you of a brand but in that case is that a blatant copy like can you really say that it is a copy so i that depends on whether or not that pattern is trademarked right i mean this is from my very very no, limited knowledge of intellectual property law or whatever i mean there are there is like fashion lawyers doing this like throughout the day but basically if that pattern is trademarked yes you cannot use that particular pattern in anything without paying burberry for it or without having access to that license or whatever so that i understand now going back to the main point of like a zara and other high street brands copying these i mean copying all the high fashion brands so i actually saw this i don't know if you remember but there was this really popular gucci uh, green jumpsuit you know it's like a utility suit with pockets and then there was a huge gucci belt of course and it was super popular some time back and this was i think it's about 4000 pounds or something ridiculous like that and i saw a very similar one on the bershka website which was in red it's pretty much the same gucci kind of jumpsuit it looks almost the same i actually put it up on our instagram account yeah, which is that. fashion and prepes by the way in case you want to check it out so i mean at the end of it it's kind of like expected now right that all the high street brands will be copying the high fashion brands i mean nobody blinks an eyelid anymore when zara and h&m and bershka and all of these copy any of the high fashion brands i mean i don't know it doesn't even seem to be like a topic of conversation anymore yeah exactly you can't walk through zara without seeing the chanel copies like the coordinate sets that they have the jacket and the skirts they have that in like i think every possible color and there's such a great copy sorry yeah and so do i <laughs> so you can't really even say anything it's been done so many times and they do it consistently like i think people at this point of time shop at zara only because they make these kind of knock offs and sometimes i feel like they look even better than the chanel one maybe it's just <laughs> like me in my visual thinking because those are the ones i can afford but it's just being done so frequently and by so many brands i don't think it's even a possibility at this point to uh like make it illegal or anything i think i don't know a huge number of stores will just shut shop if that ever happens yeah i mean even the problem is i mean even if you make it illegal how are you ever going to enforce it i mean yeah. at the end of it zara is going to fight a lawsuit and say that oh this is not what we uh did and this is i mean oh it's a little bit different like this and it's a little bit different like that and you know there are ways to get into it and this is just going to go on and on but okay so what really annoys me what the copying that actually annoys me is when zara did it with those like you know copying pins exactly, and uh, yeah. brooches that were made by some independent artist somewhere i don't know the details of the case are you aware of the details yeah they were all over i think the independent artists like put side by side pictures and then it came up that there were more than 500 independent artists who had been creating like basically um uh, patches and uh, pins etc and they they hadn't even bothered to modify these uh, designs even a little bit it was a basic like a complete like lift from the uh, the original design and they uh, added it to patches on their bags and jeans and shirts and things like that so what 
the main uh, topic of discussion became around this is zara is a huge company they employ probably thousands and thousands of designers who design their clothes so if these people are obviously doing their research and finding these uh, designs somewhere right online or in like etsy and places like uh, like these uh, uh, independent websites where they put up their work they can afford to pay these artists to for the right to use their work legally there is no need for these designers to rip these guys off it's not it's really not the same as uh, like trying to copy a chanel things like that these artisans are basically looking for work exactly like that they lease out their designs all the time so i this i think ha- rubbed everybody the wrong way and it, it 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 doesn't sound right at all like if you're such a huge brand you have you're selling so many clothes why wouldn't you bother to legally acquire the rights to use these uh, designs from these small uh, basically design designers artists this is something that really pisses me off i mean to be honest yeah i can i know that zara is copying chanel but i'm le- less concerned about yeah. zara a multi million dollar co- company copying chanel a multi billion dollar company then like poor artists and stuff people who sit at home and make their cute little pins and sell them on etsy for a living i mean that is just really really sad i mean but then i i mean it's so frustrating because i mean what can you do about it i mean you can go and support the artists on their etsy pages instead of buying from zara but at the end of it you might not have access to their yeah. etsy you might not be able to order from them you might not even be aware of so much issues so many of these issues i mean you and i i know we really look for fashion news to follow and we really look into things like this but most people don't i mean who's who has the time for all of this that i mean that's kind of sad yeah but the series was pissing me off so much i stopped shopping at zara for a while it was really annoying i was following this on twitter i was like looking through all, like the page that was set up uh, there was a website that was set up and all of these i think there were more than 50 to 60 of these uh, small uh, basically artists who were creating the designs who were on this and there was a go fund me page for them because of the a uh, lawsuit that they want they were planning to file against zara i think there was a settlement they did settle with these artists they they paid them some money but in in the end i guess i mean they were happy with what they got but i really don't see the point here like if you found these designs you've obviously gone to the website you looked on etsy you you figure out where these designs are coming from why wouldn't you just hire them i'm sure they're not as expensive as how much they paying their own designers so of who are obviously not doing their job so might as well hire these people instead right at least they'll be original i mean to be honest, when you said that these designers are obviously not doing their job i actually disagree because i honestly think zara's mandate to their designers seem to be look at everything on the run- runway look at something cute you find on the web and just copy it I I mean what kind of quality controls do they have in place to make sure people are not plagiarizing designs I really doubt they have anything in place I mean I otherwise are you telling me like a multi million dollar company like Zara can't find out if one of their designers has copied something from the web instead of uh, making her own design No for sure like if you think about like if, uh, sometimes I do that too uh, like if you I suppose you went to Zara and you saw something cute that you liked and i can't find it anymore so if you do a web search of that there'll be literally some seven other websites who carry the same exact thing like literally maybe a little different maybe the sleeves won't be there or the skirt will be a different length but it's the exact same thing so it's not just zara like i know we are basically targeting zara because they are the most obvious uh, brand it's like uh, very easy to see that it's been done for a long time the multiple brands basically that are uh, producing these cheap knockoffs over and over and over again even forever 21 basically they change their i think within the i don't even know how often they change their clothes in the stores i think it's in a month sometimes it's like if you see something and you go back after a month it's not even there so for for them to churn out this volume of clothing i don't even know if it's possible to for everything to be original at some point they have to be like copying or plagiarizing so i think that's the basic like brand motto i don't even uh 
think that they're yeah what you basically said like they, their directive to their designers probably is just make cute copies yeah well, i mean that's why i think i'm less bothered about this whole thing about zara copying like a chanel fine i mean at the end of it when gucci is making that jumpsuit which is 4000 pounds it is not expecting everybody on the street to buy it it is yeah. fully expecting that there will be copies of that jumpsuit in a few months which bershka has followed through on and it's there on their website now for anybody to go and buy but i think the other other instance of copying which really annoyed me and something that i've disliked about the brand ever since is when isabel maran it's a french brand i think you know they have these like a bit like whimsy boho type like a bit cowboyish those kind of clothes and they copied i think i can't believe they had the guts to do this but they copied some specific designs which were like of mexican origin like indigenous designs of particular mexican communities and then after that she and apparently then she then brand got sued because you cannot reproduce those designs the mexican and native american designs without a license from those communities and then apparently the brand actually sued them back i mean that seemed like such an absurd situation to me and i it's just i mean i have never been interested in isabel maran as a brand i have it's just something that has completely rubbed me the wrong way about the brand and i mean i like buying sometimes i do like buying designer items and i will save up my money and buy them but i know i will never buy something that is isabel maran what happened in the other <laughs> i i'm going to find out a little bit more but basically they kind of copied like those particular patterns you when you see the patterns you'll know what i mean they are like a bit like aztec kind of traditional aztec patterns like colorful okay. uh, different kind of designs like the z kind of design and then uh, of course she got sued or whatever and then tried to sue back or some nonsense like that so i mean that those instances of copying and copying from like small uh, independent artisans somewhere that's just i mean that's just bad i mean i would think that's even bad pr so i don't understand why brands are not, not more careful about it yeah this sounds pretty serious and i don't understand how they would not be able to sue them back that kind of defies logic yeah okay now i'm feeling a bit sad about this whole situation yeah. it's not this kind even, of a sad topic yeah it's not even just restricted to i think fashion or clothing sometimes uh, i mean i think diet prada is calling out a lot of these uh, inspired fashion shoots as well so you see blatant copies like literally they've just changed all the models but the concept and the look and everything sometimes even the clothes that the uh, models are wearing are, will be the exact same So the most recent one I saw was the Kylie Jenner and her boyfriend's shoot, which literally they put side by side. There was a different, uh, older shoot uh, with black and white photos. They were exactly the same. So things As- like this, I guess, if you're paying homage or something, you should, I guess, uh, mention the original, uh, like the original photographer. But I don't think they did that in that case. So basically yeah. it's happening in every single industry. I mean yeah I understand totally that fashion trends get you know regurgitated and just moved along again and again but I mean pay cre- give credit where it's due give credit where you got your inspiration from I mean otherwise it's just it's just too tacky it's just horrible. That's yeah, true. I mean if we get started on our Indian designers I don't even know if we'd be able to finish uh within an hour or it is going to take days literally everything i see on these uh bollywood uh, uh celebrities everything seems to be a copy of some western designer it's just a really really sad state of affairs everything like direct copies and you know that they're not the originals because they're a, a remade like a cheaper version of it so it's okay So I understand if people want to wear uh, like designer clothes, etc. But really, if you want it to look exactly as the original, then at least attempt to save up or 
I mean, if you're a celebrity, you should just be able to ask them to lend it to you, right? That's a possibility. And if not, just try to support Indian designers. What's wrong with that? There's so many people doing great original work here. Why would you not want to support them? Okay, 100%. I mean, yeah, Indian celebrities going and wearing copy designers from celebrity, I mean, de designs outside is just, I mean, it's just stupid. But, okay, I take exception to the fact that you said there are Indian celebrities wearing these or Indian designers copying because you remember the whole Dior drama, right? The <laughs> yeah. dress that Sonam Kapoor wore, which was from Dior and it was, I think, their resort collection. So, it's like their 2018 collection. The pattern was apparently uh, from a really like a very uh, small kind of like an NGO kind of company called People Tree, and they yeah yeah yeah. And it was on a magazine cover, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right. Exactly, yeah. L cover. Yeah. And, I mean, so I remember putting this up on my Facebook page, and everybody, and I was like. I mean, Sonam Kapoor is supposed to be this fashionista, right? I mean, so she was wearing this Dior dress and Dior obviously copied the pattern from People Tree. And I was like, why didn't she do something about it? Or how could she have not known? Now, a lot of people, of course, responded and said that there's no way for her to know. But my problem with that was if you see that design and if you see that Dior dress, Everything about it is Indian. The pattern is a completely Indian pattern. I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't understand why. If I wear, if I see a Dior dress like that, I would be curious to know where it's coming from because the pattern is so Indian. So, I mean, I don't understand. I understand celebrities are wearing and doing fashion shoots every day. But if you are such a person who's so much interested in fashion, you, have, you are like this proclaimed fashionista and you like talking about fashion and being involved in the fashion world I mean are you not curious where that pattern came from what is the inspiration behind that dress or do you think I'm expecting too much from these celebrities uh, till a certain uh, point I think it might be a little difficult for her to uh, authenticate each and everything that she's wearing but yeah. definitely if uh, I think what she was wearing was very clearly had Indian patterns on it. So even if she did ask them, I mean, do you think there's a way for her to verify? Like even if the brand tells her that, oh, it's an Indian designer, we sourced this from somewhere. Like I don't see a, like a logical way for her to actually verify if uh, it is correctly sourced or they've, whether they've paid the original artist or things like that. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not, I really don't have much uh, like, hope that she will even go to that length but I mean a general normal person if uh, you want to be uh, you want to be smart about it you don't want to be called out and if you want to be like ethical about what you wear so even if you do approach brands how do you really verify if it is like if they've paid the original artist or if they've sourced it correctly or the design is not plagiarized Basically, I think the solution here is to just educate yourself, like really think hard about what you're wearing, who you're wearing, where is it coming from. But apart from that, is there really a way to verify these things? Yeah, I agree. I mean, at the end of it, also, I mean, you have to give Sonam Kapoor the benefit of the doubt. I mean, if you are wearing Dior, you expect that it is of the best quality, right? I mean... Let's not forget at the end of it, the blame is on Dior and it's not on Sonam Kapoor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, I'm saying that wearing a Zara t-shirt right here. So yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so, really, sorry. Zara really is killing it with the copies. I think I've seen like three different copies of Chanel bags and it's just so funny and it's, it's so obvious, but I don't know why they keep doing it. And people keep buying it. I mean, I'm, I'm extremely obsessed with these fancy bags, okay? I, I mean, if you show me a bag, I will be able to name that bag. I will be able to tell you what the brand name is and the name of that bag. So anytime I go into these stores and I see the bags, I mean, I just can't do it. I just can't bring myself to buy one. 
I mean, the last bag I bought was um, this bag I bought in Shanti Niketan in uh, near Calcutta. It was like this, you know, handcrafted bag which I bought. I mean, I and that was like almost two years ago. I don't think I've bought a bag from the high street in the last three, four years now. It's just, I mean, once you go in and I'm like, okay, this is a copy of a Chanel. Oh my God, this is a copy of a Chloe. Oh my God, this is a copy of the Louis Vuitton. I mean, it's just all in my head and I can't do it anymore. It's just sad. Anyway. It's sad, but in a way, for people who can't afford it, I think Zara is a good option. It's really, yeah, but these brands, as you said earlier, they really are even asking for it. Like, like, why are those brands so expensive? I guess, yes, they are an investment and things like that. But yeah, in a way, they are asking for it. So that's a topic for (laughs) sometime in the next coming month. Let's not say next week because our next week we have way too many topics to talk about. So sometime in the coming months. But should we move on to our next topic, by the way? Our lifestyle and beauty related topic. Yes, let's do that. that. Okay, let me introduce this. So basically, what we wanted to talk about was something which was a little bit more relevant for us. So our topic for the lifestyle beauty segment this time is about going to a gym. Do you go to a gym? How important is it going to a gym? Do you feel the pressure of wanting to go to a gym or needing to go to a gym? Shadrubha, tell us about your gym routine. If you have one, what you're doing, how you feel about it, and we'll take it from there. So, so yes, yes, and yes to all of your questions. I do feel the pressure to go to the gym. I do go to a gym. And, yeah, I do feel I need to go to a gym. I feel like it makes me happier in a day. Like, the day that I go work out, I'm happier the next day also. So, definitely, I feel like it's a necessity that people should... At least carve out, even if it's 10 to 15 minutes, you should definitely like try to do something. Even if it's like just a walk or like even if you're walking around in your room, I think even that's enough. It really, really does make you feel better. Okay, so coming to my, uh, like what I do right now. So basically, I go to this, I've subscribed for this. um, It's not a typical gym. It's called Cult Fitness. So they offer a lot of different classes. So they basically have boxing, they have Zumba. They used to have MMA, which is mixed martial arts, but they've stopped those classes for some reason. They also have something called Prowl, which is a mix of like aerobics and boxing and those kind of uh, like fitness related. And they also have some self-defense sort of stuff. They do yoga as well. And I think I'm missing something here. And they have a strength and conditioning class. So what they recommend is a mix of all of these classes. So that's what I try to do. But I find myself most often going to the Zumba classes. That's also because I have some friends who also go to the Zumba classes. So it, it's kind of fun to do it together. So my goal is to basically take uh, at least three classes a week. Like by a week, I mean Monday to Friday. I definitely try to um, make, make it to these classes Saturday and Sunday. So I do the Saturday, Saturday morning class and the Sunday morning class. And if I'm feeling like really stressed out and things like that, I try to do a couple of yoga classes in addition to these uh, classes. So basically I do Zumba and alternate days I do uh, boxing. So that's about my routine. What about you, Anisha? What do you? Your list just now has just exhausted me. (laughs) I mean, are you doing anything else? Are you doing anything else except going to the gym and doing Zumba and yoga? Oh my god. <laughs> it's just an hour. It's an hour in a day. So That's true actually when you say it like that. Okay, so I kind of had a semi-decent gym routine, especially before I was going for, I went for a four-day trek to Peru, which was amazing. But I was really tense about that. So before that, I was going to gym very, uh, like super dedicated. But... I think, of course, my biggest problem is incentive. I mean, I luckily do not actually have to go to the gym to lose weight, gain weight, none of those. So the only reason I need to go just to strength, just for strength training, because I don't have any stamina, I don't have any strength. And that is literally why I was was going before the trek. 
and after the trek has been over it's been over for quite some time i came back in june in the beginning of june i have not gone back to the gym i'm finding it very difficult to be motivated for the sometime in the beginning i had some problem with my knee so now i'm doing physiotherapy for that and now my knee is fine and i can go to the gym but i have just not been doing that i don't know what to do about it but what i actually wanted to ask you is that do you feel the pressure to go to the gym to lose weight gain weight you know for a particular reason because everybody seems to be going to the gym to lose weight yeah i'm definitely going to the gym to lose weight and initially i i, I mean maybe not so much now i don't think like if you think you need to lose weight it's around like 80% of it is will be your diet so you can basically lose weight even if you are not going to the gym every day that's not really a necessity for you if you're really trying to lose weight but again uh, to keep the weight off you really need to work it's really something that needs to happen and i definitely started 100% uh, going to the gym because i wanted to lose weight it's it's i it's something that uh, i started and then it kind of progressed into just like a feel good thing it makes me really happy to work out so that's what it's come to now so i don't really see any change or anything like i don't feel like i'm losing weight because of working out i feel like it's making me stronger it uh, it like clears my head and it's 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 good like i it really enjoy boxing now it takes out a lot of uh, like at the end of a work day if i'm like pissed at someone i just take it out all out in the class and it it's really great so i would recommend that to anybody but apart from that if you're looking to lose weight i think uh the proper way to go is to get uh like a proper diet plan as well as working out oh i i mean i think this whole situation where you're going to the gym because you enjoy it that is like the optimum situation that is what you need to get to and i guess it'll be different things that will take you there it's either you're wanting to lose weight or you know trying to train for a trek or something so i need to get to that situation basically i need to get to that position okay so i mean the other thing is that okay so i don't know about bangalore although i'm sure it's pretty bad but gyms in london are insanely expensive like when i tell you insanely expensive i mean i know gyms where each class is about 25 30 pounds yeah. one class i think it's pretty much with some here. sorry i think it's pretty much the same here it's it's like it's, it's i think for a yearly subscription i paid somewhere close to 20k so that's that sounds crazy to me but yeah. I mean but I personally don't think that you need to go to the gym to have an optimum fitness routine or to do anything. I mean if you I guess my point is if you have the will you'll have the way. Yeah. If there's a will there's a way. But it's just that if you are somebody who's not got that incentive and that motivation I think a gym helps. definitely i think the hardest part is just getting there like you know making yourself just go to the class i never regret my time once i'm there but it's always just like making myself go is the like it's the hardest part and also i think uh, if you find something that's fun that should be easy uh, what were when you were working out what were the kind of things that you were doing anisha so i used to do this class body pump i don't know if you've done it it basically with the barbell and you do exercises with the barbell Okay, no, I so really I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I mean you do squats and you do lunges and you do your arm, arms and shoulders, everything. So it's like a complete workout with a bar with barbell. It's like about forty five minutes or an hour. That's a great class. The other classes I used to do are spinning or Pilates. I love doing Pilates. Mm-hmm. I mean I would recommend Pilates to anybody. So I mean those were some things I. really did enjoy so i'm going to try and go back to it definitely yeah i did some pilates class like a couple of years ago but i yeah it was really fun but i mean is it similar to yoga i mean do you think if you're doing yoga would it be kind of unnecessary to also do pilates i find at least the classes that i went to seemed a little similar so since now i do 
a few yoga classes i don't think maybe pilates is necessary but but i hear it's really really good for you so i would really recommend pilates i mean i've done yoga as well but i mean yoga i think concentrates a little bit more on the breathing and a little bit more on the spirituality of it which i'll be really honest i'm not very interested in so i thought so pilates was a great option for me and this other thing is this really weird situation that happened when i went to my physiotherapist for my knee is that she basically told me i think i've told you this that i have i i am some i have something called hypermobility where basically your joints are really extremely flexible it wow. sounds like an absurd situation <laughs> but i realized that i can do all of those pilates and yoga poses not because i'm good at it but it's because my joints are like that now the problem with that is your muscles need to support your joints which mine don't because my muscles are not as strong as my joints are there is some weird situation like that so basically after learning all of this my physiotherapist has told me that i should do pilates and not do yoga so i am going to be continuing doing pilates and hopefully go through that yeah this knee is a common problem with a lot of people i hear even in my yoga classes they always tell us to be careful about your knees and if you have some knee issues you fold your mat like a little like uh, in that you fold it once more and then you basically put your knees on it so yeah it seems like if you are doing any sort of exercise classes specifically yoga i think you should just generally be careful about your knees and make sure i mean yeah, look at it shouldn't be uncomfortable that's what they say yeah. okay the okay so there are lots of these fitness fads around okay there are lots of these crazy classes so what are the classes you've seen and what is the class that you were interested in going to have you seen any of these weird ones or is it only a london thing i wonder what do you mean by weird ones i think the hot yoga thing was pretty weird i didn't understand the concept of it like basically why are you working out in an oven like what is happening i mean if you're working I've, out you're going to be sweating anyway and if you're not sweating then what are you even doing with your life so i, I think this yeah, it sounds a bit shady and, and it sounds really gross to be honest like a lot of these yoga classes right a lot of people don't take their own yoga mats so they give you these yoga mats in these classes so imagine trying to use these yoga mats after a class of hot yoga like what even I don't even want to think about it. So, it's grossing me out as I'm talking about it. So yeah, that seemed really strange. Apart from that, I don't know if I've heard of any other funny classes. Okay, so don't judge me, but I had a I I was I got a free hot yoga class, so I went for it. Did you bring your own mat? Is my question. I don't think so. Anyway, so it was a three-hour class, and I'm telling you seriously. Wow. after those 3 hours i came back home i think i was sick for 3 days after that i am not yeah. kidding so yeah, exactly. i am not a believer in hot yoga at all it was, seemed absurd this is probably the matter nisha i'm sorry to say this the funny classes that i was telling you of, okay so there are these lots of fancy classes in london you have that you know the boot camp classes barry's boot camp yeah. and then you have this barry core and all of these fancy classes Hold up one second. Is this Barry's boot camp the same thing that's there in the US? Is it the same Barry's boot camp? Yes. Okay. So fun fact, this Barry's boot camp is actually super famous because I think Kim Kardashian used to go to the guy. So they started showing this uh like his basically gym or his uh, workout sessions on the show and then it kind of just blew up. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. because i i think all of these yoga i mean all of these fancy fitness studios you need like celebrities to make it big is basically what they've all realized so they kind of try and rope in all these celebrities to do them and because i think celebrities are the only people who can afford them because they are bloody expensive they are like 30 pounds a class i'm sorry but who who can pay that much to sweat i don't understand this i don't even i mean It seems uh, slightly hypocritical of me saying it because I go to these classes every single day. But if I think it's more, there are so many YouTube tu- 
tutorials. Like literally, I'm sure that even if you don't have a laptop, you can watch it on your phone and you can literally follow along. And they will, I mean, I think they range from 10 minutes to 2 hours. You can do it for as long as, I think there are even these fitness videos. <laughs> when I was when I was first trying to look for yoga ones, I saw a couple of uh, ones that Shilpa Shetty had done and they were two and a half hours long. Basically, her entire DVD is on YouTube. So you can follow along. So I'm sure there are tons and tons of these classes that you can even like just watch on YouTube and follow along. There is no need to go to a class. Yeah, I agree. I think it's only, I think it only helps with motivation and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a friend who goes to these classes to meet people. So, if that's something you're looking to. So, does she or he actually end up meeting people? But I Not guess that's yet, an interesting way. But she might. There are a lot of cute people in these classes. That's also I mean, something that's very strange to me. See, like, I don't see so many, like, unfit people at these classes. I, I would say in some classes, I'm the most unfit person there. It's kind of sad. But extremely fit people at these classes. So, if you... I mean, these people are so fit and they continue to work out every single day. So that should tell you, like, you know, it's really not for losing weight. It's basically just to, uh, like, increase, like, your strength and, like, just maintain your fitness. So, okay, I agree. But what I've also seen now around, around me everywhere is this crazy obsession with fitness. Like, I mean, really? it's not... It's not enough that you work out 20 minutes a day. You walk for an hour every day. I mean, people seem to be wanting to achieve some crazy level of fitness, like, yeah, like Olympic yeah, swimmer level of fitness. I mean, I, I don't know. I just think it's a bit excessive. I mean, after some time, it feels like you're just, I mean, you're just doing it because you're in that whole crazy high of exercise. And, you know, I mean, it just seems a bit much to me sometimes. I'm or am I just saying that because I'm sitting on my couch and doing nothing? <laughs> no, I mean, there's no harm in it, I guess. But yeah, I think this whole Insta fitness kind of thing, like there's a bunch of people making these before, after videos and things like that. I don't even know how many of those are real and how many of those are Photoshop. It seems, uh, some of them seem slightly suspect, to be honest. But I think it's, it's first of all, it's great that this is happening. I'm all for it. And also... I feel like our the general population, I think, it, we were just so like into this whole junk food kind of thing. The obesity is like a real issue in certain countries. And so I think from there to here, I, it was asked for, like it was definitely called for. I think we needed this whole wannabe fitness model sort of uh, mm. phase that we're going through. Yeah, I mean, but I, I would also like to, like, have kind of a balance because, like, I went for a barricore class or, I, I mean, all these, you know, uh, really fancy studio classes. And, I mean, you don't want that situation where everybody feels that there is, like, a kind of pressure to go for these really fancy, expensive classes. And one thing I'll tell you, like, these classes are so well thought of. I mean, they are literally aiming for an Instagram generation. You have to see these classes, like, super white walls, neon signs, and, like, super minimalist. And, you know, the whole oh. deal, like, the millennial pink. Yeah. It's just so crazy. How do you even take pictures while you're working out? They make us leave exactly. our phones outside. I don't know. There are people there clicking pictures. There are like, I mean, it seems to be more like, I mean, for Instagram than for anything else. And I find right. it quite straight sometimes. I mean, yeah, and that's I find it very straight sometimes. Yeah, basically that's true for everything in life these days. Everything is for Instagram. Yep. Like if you didn't put a picture on Instagram, did you even do it? Exactly. We even go for barricade. But some of these classes are hardcore. Like, I literally come back home drenched in sweat. And I was actually surprised when you mentioned that yoga uh, is, like, spiritual. Because here, it's, like, you know, maybe the first five seconds, he'll be, like, breathe in, breathe out, let's do an own thing. And then that's it. After that, he's just, like, out to, like, kill us. Like, literally. <laughs> By the end of the class, I'm thinking, like, do you really have something against me personally? Why are you torturing me? It's That's strange, actually. So, I think that's 
also because I mean I have friends who are extremely seriously into yoga. So this friend of mine, she talks about yoga in a like, I mean, she talks about how there are people who are just interested in the physical aspects of it. But yoga is more than physical. It is about your mental well being. It is about your spiritual well being. And I mean, she really studies it seriously. So of course, there are two schools of thought for it and all of that. I mean, you can take as much as you want and you can reject as much as you want, which is great. But yeah. But I definitely think of yoga as much more spiritual than any other kind of exercise, obviously. Yeah, it is. Definitely is coming. Okay, now I'm going to be going to the gym and I'm going to make some kind of effort to go back to the gym. I think I need to sign up for a marathon or do something crazy like that, which has to be my only incentive to go back to the gym. Otherwise, I'm just not getting off this couch. I think one of my biggest motivations to keep working out is because I just don't want to think about what I'm eating. I just want to eat what I want to eat. And I, in order to do that, I think I need to keep working out. Basically to stay at the weight that I want to be at. Because you can't be doing both. I kind of enjoy my biryani on the weekends and things like that. And I can't deal with like a strict diet and working for more than like 8 to 10 hours every day. I think it's not possible to maybe be that strict with my diet so working out definitely helps me kind of keep that in check just be a little more uh, lenient with what i'm eating but i'm definitely also trying to eat uh, cleaner but it's just slightly difficult because most of my meals are at work so yeah i think we need to do the whole thing about food as well maybe yeah. how to eat well Actually, we but did I a post those. on the blog about like healthy lunches that you can, easy lunches that you can do uh, and take it to work. Uh, that was on, post. It was really useful, yeah. I'm going to put a link on that. Yeah. All the links are going to be there below. Yeah. So, so I was actually going to say that I'm one of those horrible people who actually do not gain weight eating, which actually is a really bad thing because then you, because everything is just so geared towards just weight. You don't realize anything else that's happening to your body as well. I mean, you might have like high cholesterol, you might have other stuff that's going wrong and you're like, oh, that's great. Who cares? But yeah, you have to be careful about eating always what if you're eating rubbish, basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we've given a lot of advice without following any of it. So should we now stop? Yeah, I think we should definitely stop. And I would really be interested in uh, hearing what everybody does, like uh, whether you kind of keep your food in check or whether you work out more, how your workout schedule is. Do you work out every day or is it three to four times? What time is good for you? I mean, I'm up for advice from anybody and everybody. Leave it all below. And, and what I want to know about is which incident of a high street brand copying pissed you off the most. That is the gossip I would do. Can I, can I answer that? Can I answer that? Okay. I got pissed when Forever 21 copied Zara. Like why? <laughs> like, <laughs> like why is that even needed? I don't understand. There is really no need to copy Zara. But yeah, that happened. Okay. I'm sure that happened. Okay, I have one more. Can I put that in? Do you remember this one specific time where I went to uh, visit you in Vidisha, I think in Bombay, and we went to this small local boutique, and we went inside and we really liked a nice white dress, I think it was, and I asked the guy how much it was, and he said some absurd price, and I was like, why is it so expensive? It doesn't look like the material seems really cheap. What? He's like, no, it's the first Zara copy. It's the first copy. <laughs> Like, what are you even talking about? Like, even the Zara one would probably be cheaper than what you're saying. But the way he said for Zara copy seemed like he was very confused about what Zara was. So that was funny. Yeah, and I also remember this. I think there was there is some website I found somewhere. I mean, which was like renting out Zara dresses. And I was like, these are not even going to last two exactly. washes. Yeah. I can understand how this works. Okay, don't talk about this now. This is something we need to talk about in detail later. It's just going on talking and it's not going to happen now. Come on. Okay. For our next topics, keep something. We've already talked for so long. Okay, okay. That's it. That's it. 
Okay. Okay. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode. So Anisha, tell us uh, where can they contact us if they want to reach out. Okay. Firstly, you have to go and check out our last episode which is going to be there just below this episode somewhere in case you're watching the video or the first episode in the podcast list. And then you need to go and check out our website, which is www.fashionandfrappes.com. That's F-R-A-P-P-E-S, frappes.com. We are on Instagram as Fashion and Frappes. We are on Twitter as Fashion Frappes. We are everywhere. Just type in Fashion Frappes in some form and you will find us. All the links are going to be included anyway, if you're too lazy to even type it in and you just want to click. No excuses. (laughs) Great, I think you covered everything. I'd just like to add one thing. If you're interested, we have a store where we sell one-of-a-kind sarees. It's called Zari by Fashion and Frappes. Uh, you can also find that uh, on our website, which as Anisha mentioned is uh, fashionfrappes.com. That link will also be below. So go ahead and check that out. The sarees are super beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.